Holly girls, peace be still. That dynamic harmonizing good that flows through us all. Let that peace emerge as that divine stillness within you at this moment. That stillness is not not doing something. It means that you're doing this is infused with the love and the peace and the harmony and the joy that comes from your divine connection with <clears throat> conscious connection with the presence of God. And I do say conscious on purpose because we're always connected to God. We're never separate from God. It is impossible for you to be separate from the presence of God. We are, as a community, seeking through spiritual practice to be consciously connected with the giver of life. Consciously connected with the presence that is everywhere with the awareness that we did not create ourselves. We have emerged from the eternal flow of love and beauty and intelligence as a distinct unit of infinite potential. Daring to wake up to our glorious nature that we may reveal the realm of ever expanding good on earth as it is in the heart mind of the infinite. So today or this month as we're moving with the theme of a holy, holy, having a holy, holy agreement with life. A holy, holy agreement with life. This month we are putting our mind on check with the agreements that we have made with life. Often we, if we check our mind, we've made agreements about life is hard until you die. We've made agreements about lack and limitation and scarcity. We've made unholy alliances with lies about life and whatever it is that we agree with forms our perception, determines the thought forms that will gravitate towards that perception, and then creates a loop of experience around that perception so that there becomes a loop of experience that becomes excuses, a loop of experience that becomes our way of saying this is the way that it is. And so we're putting our mind on check so that we come into a holy, holy agreement that life is for us. W-H-O-L-L-Y means totally, utterly, absolutely. A holy agreement, a holy, holy agreement, H-O-L-Y, which is divine, which is the exalted. So we're having a holy, holy agreement from the depth of our being that life is good, that life is magnificent, even though they may, that may not square with our experience in the moment. They may not square with past experiences. It may not square with things that we see in the news, on the newsreel. It may not square with human experience, but we are aware that we are more than experiential beings. We are spiritual beings having a human incarnation, and our experience is the outpicturing of the thought forms that we are clutching the two, consciously and unconsciously. So today we're saying, agree to disagree. Your th uh, those thoughts that are moving through your awareness, don't believe in them. <laughs> you know, there is something called the vanity of the ego. The vanity of the ego absolutely tries to take ownership of the thoughts moving through our awareness. It uses this word called mine. <laughs> that's my thought. That's my idea. That's, my, that's, that's, that's my whatever, and just fill in the blank. It's called the vanity of the ego. And that happens with thought forms that are coming from the world, or it actually, and it actually happens through things that are inspiring that come through us. That's mine. That's my idea. So there's something called the vanity of the ego, and we embrace these thought forms, and oftentimes we do not check the mind and examine where these thought forms are even coming from. Don't believe all those thoughts moving through your awareness. You may have picked them up along the way by just accidentally catching it from the social milieu, the news, which is really the olds, and you begin to ruminate around these particular thoughts and they begin to produce experience in your life. Today, we are saying in substance, don't, we're saying uh, uh, agree to disagree with those thoughts so that you can come into a more of a, of a, of a, of a, of a harmonizing, dynamic good 
that is seeking to move through you even in this instant. Something is trying to happen. There's a thought. There's one thought that you may want to disagree with, and that is somebody out there has your answer. Somebody out there is the one that's going to help you. That's called secondary causative factor. Oftentimes, uh, uh, people will go into prayer work, and they're not praying to have a direct contact with the infinite. They're not praying to have a conscious revelation of their oneness with God. They're not praying to touch the source of all creation. They're not pr praying to touch the source of all supply. They are praying for someone out there to help them, to bring them their answer. And so they are going to the secondary causative factor of the presence of God rather than going to the presence of God first and foremost. And then they are shocked and surprised when, in fact, someone in the external, seeming external world cannot help them, cannot bring surcease to their pain, cannot make them happy because they are going not direct they're going to a securities route to the power and the presence and the love of God. Agree to disagree with that particular path to the infinite. <laughs> Say in substance, I'm always going directly to the presence of God. And here's the deal. God will work through people. God will work through people. God will work through a circumstance or a situation. God will provide an opportunity. The presence of God, which is a dynamic presence that is everywhere, constantly in the blessing business, cannot work against itself, cannot compromise its own nature. So an individual may show up, show up. individual might be in your life that will assist, but you're not looking to her or him or them. You are looking inside for your divine connection, and then the surprise happens, or sometimes it doesn't surprise you. When the love of God moves through the hands of those that are around you, but you go to God first, disagree with your mind that's looking to secondary causes, the factors to bring you what you think you need, because then you will become a stalker. Then you, you will become an individual that is needy. You will become an individual that's looking for somebody to bail you out. You will be looking for, in all the wrong places, look directly inside of your own soul. Sit with it until there is an inner realization that the need is met. Then it shows up through people. It shows up through anyone. Then come to an understanding that your inner self-reflection, the reason, one of the reasons why you self-reflect, as we talked about in this morning's way of meditation service, is to soulfully disentangle the thoughts that you think someone is having about you or that you're thinking about yourself that does not resonate with the truth of your being. Let me say that again. You are doing your self-reflection. You're going within to see those thoughts that you might be thinking someone else is thinking about you or you're thinking about yourself that does not resonate with the truth of your being. Now, what is the truth of your being? That you are the light, the light that lights up every man, every woman, every they, every them that comes to the planet. What is the truth of your being? At your head with Christ and God. What is the truth of your, of your being? You're a budding Buddha. What is the truth of your being? Is that your life emerged from the divine presence and has everything it needs to fulfill its divine destiny. It is an idea, a seed idea that has infinite potentiality when placed within the proper conditionality. That particular seed grows and unfurls and unfolds and reflects and reveals the infinite as only it can. You are to disentangle those particular thoughts through self reflection Reflection. You look at the thoughts passing through your awareness. You check yourself before you wreck yourself. You check the mind so that all of those particular thought forms don't believe them. Agree to disagree with them. Say that is not the truth of my being. That might have been my experience because I was experiencing not reality. I was experiencing my thought forms about reality. You agree to disagree and then stand in the awareness that there's an awesome presence that is seeking by means of you to express itself more fully and completely. 
disagree with the thought that you have to make a, a big splash in the world. You know, ever since celebrity and fame has moved wisdom and love off the throne, and everyone is trying to make a big splash some kind of way, people are trying to make big, big splashes doing ignorant stuff. They don't even care. If, if it's stupid, if it's hateful, if it's ignorant, as long as everybody knows about it, you see. So, so, so you, you disagree with the thought you want to make a big splash. Because as Meister Eckhart reminds us, and I'm, and I, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. It might even, might even sound like him. It's probably going to sound like Beckwith. But, but all of your deeds that you do, they might be beautiful. I'm talking about when you're trying to do a good deed. It might be beautiful. But if they are devoid of the conscious inner luminosity, that sense of oneness with God, they amount to little. But if you do a small deed that's full to overflowing with your inner ecology, that's full to overflowing with light and love and beauty and intelligence and connection with God, it is magnified. So you have to make a big splash. You have to allow for your inner ecology to be one that is disentangling yourself from the thoughts that are not in vibrational harmony with the fundamental harmony of your being, coming into a greater awareness of your oneness with God, and then you infuse your deed with that love. In other words, you're not just trying to get stuff done. I know in this high-paced world, social media and all the stuff we have to get done, we're so busy. We want to move from just getting something done with how we're getting it done. That is, if it's infused with love, infused with light, infused with beauty, infused with patience, infused with whatever it is, whether it's washing the dishes, mowing your lawn, whatever, and communicating with someone that's infused with that, that deed is magnified in the presence, with the presence of God. And it does make a big splash, but not because your ego is saying, oh, I want to make a big splash. It's the only game in town. And then we begin to discover that if you want a barometer, for your spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment. Just notice within yourself, as we are growing and unfolding, if we're becoming sweeter beings, more loving beings. You know, Medea Brown read at the memorial service of Isaiah, Isaiah Jones this past weekend, and she, she read Howard Thurman's I Want to Be More Loving in My Heart, one of our are wonderful pieces that we've used to kind of build the vibrational infrastructure of Agape International Spiritual Center. And this was the uh, memorial service of her for grandson. And, you, and when she began to read, I want to be more loving in my heart as an ode to the sweetness of Isaiah. You could just feel in the room people just yearning not just to remember and love Isaiah, which was why we were there, yes, yes. but you could feel the impulse of everyone wanting to just to be more loving, just, just remembering that we've taken a human incarnation not to get the bottles of the world, but to perfect our loving. Yes. At the end of the day, when we cross the great divide, the only thing we're going to take with us is our consciousness of love, our consciousness of how we love, of consciousness of our, our effort in loving, our consciousness and our desire to love, uh, uh, desire to bring peace and the beauty and joy, uh, joy to the planet. And so as I had the opportunity to say, say last night, I was one of the speakers at an event at the, at the World System Solution, at Spring Gala, which was, which was all about 
uh, alerting individuals to the climate emergency that we're involved in right now and to, to muster a deep sense of collaboration around all of the organizations to make a mighty difference on the planet at this time in human history where we have approximately seven years to make a mega difference before things might be irreversible in terms of the degradation that's happening to the planet and the pollution that's taking place. I, there's a lot that I just said, didn't I? Anyway, I had the opportunity to say ultimately that the new revolutionaries on the planet are those who love. The real revolutionaries are those who love. That, that you see individuals with guns and you see individuals with, with a, a might and individuals with tanks and individuals in war. And we have all these images of might being power. No, the real power is love, you see. Might is not power. Power is love. And the real revolutionaries are those who at this time in human history, regardless of the hate that moves through the internet and, and the individuals that that cancel people when they make mistakes. <laughs> the, the real revolutionaries are those that are standing up and are standing in the field of love. Yes, yes. Holding that space when it's hard, when it's difficult. This is why we celebrate the individuals like Martin Luther King Jr. It's why we celebrate individuals like Arun Gandhi, individuals like Harry Belafonte who stood and used his celebrity to bring forth a divine, uh, a heavy conversation, a beautiful conversation about civil and human rights. You see, as a matter of fact, we need to no longer ever again build a statue to a soldier. We want to build statues to teachers. We want to build statues to individuals that are healers. We, don't want, to, we want to build statues to people who make truces and, and learn how to mediate. It's the end of the era to building statues to war heroes because we don't want to study war no more. We want to turn our swords into plowshares. And so we want to come to an awareness that we want to agree to disagree with the errant thought forms that would say that might is power. We want to disagree with the thought forms that say, oh, I want to be famous. I want to, I want to make a big splash. No, we want our inner light to come through every deed that we have. We want to agree to, to disagree with, as we're doing self-reflection with every thought about ourselves or every thought we think uh, other people are thinking about us that's not in resonance with the fundamental harmony of our being. We want to release the vanity of the ego that tries to own everything that flows through our awareness. I'm not saying that in this world you don't copyright. I'm not saying you don't do whatever you need to do to ensure that you're being compensated properly for whatever it is that you write. I'm saying that we hold inspiration. We hold the ideation of the spirit that moves through us. We become aware where it's coming from. It's coming directly from the source of all creation. We let go of the errant thought form that our good is coming from someone. Our good is coming from through someone, but coming from God everywhere. Now, if we walk in that awareness, if we become strong enough to do our inner reflection and really get, my need is met direct from the source. My need is met directly from the source. My need is met directly from the source. We sit with that long enough. I'm talking about self-reflection. I'm not talking about it's just, you know, like a 37, God is all my self. God is all, God is my source of life. You know, just, I mean, you got to sit with it until there's a feeling of that. Yeah, God is the source of my supply. God is the source of my supply. God is my supply. The life of God is my supply. Then you start to see all these opportunities. You, you start to feel the support of the Spirit coming through people. But you are aware that behind that person is the presence operating through that person. You see, you thank them, but you know it's the presence that brought them to you because it's in resonance with you clearing your mind, agreeing to disagree with the lies, and having a holy, holy 
agreement with life. Life is for you. Say, life is for me. Everywhere in the sanctuary, everywhere all around the world, just say, life is for me. Life is for me. Life is meant to be good. All of my needs are met through life's givingness. And I give myself permission to receive. I give myself permission to accept the good. Now, this word permission is very, very important because what you are doing is you're moving to a higher octave of your own being. There are octaves, you see, in frequencies. And you have to give yourself permission to move to a higher octave. Now, the difficulty is that people try to move to the higher octave where they try to take their baggage with them. You can't do it. <laughs> the baggage is vibrating at a lower frequency. So when you give yourself permission to move to a higher octave, you're also saying, I'm not taking that with me. I, I, I'm not going to have uh, amnesia about anything that's happened, but I'm not going to take it with me. I'm not going to take the vibration with me. Yes, that particular thing happened, but I'm not taking the vibration with me. I'm taking love. I'm taking peace. I'm taking joy. I'm taking absolute beauty. And I'm infusing to the best of my ability, moment by moment, every deed with this influx of light. It takes a small little deed to make a big splash. I, re I remember, this is coming into my mind this morning. I remember when I was attending USC and I was walking across the campus and there was this young lady who was, uh, her books were on the ground and she was crying and I, I asked her what was going on and she said, you know, I went to the financial aid office and they told me my papers weren't correct and I'm not going to get my financial aid and, and I, I, I'm just, I'm, to get it, I'm, I'm leaving school, I'm just going to get a job and I, I helped her pick up her books and I said, well, how many, um, how many years do you have to go to graduate? And she said, two years. Something like that. And I said, something, four semesters. Uh, 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 she said, I can't remember how I said it. Said, four semesters or something like that. And she looked at me. And she said, oh, that's not a long time. <laughs> hmm. And she picked up her books and she, she went back in the financial aid office. I never saw her again until a number of years later. I'm in the Bodhi tree that used to exist. And this lady runs up to me, and she says, oh, my God, I've always wanted to see you. I said, I didn't know who she was. You know. <laughs> really? She said, yes, a number of years ago at USC, you stopped and helped me with my books, and you said I only had a couple of semesters to graduate. She said, that changed my whole mind. And I went in, and I got the paperwork together. I graduated from SC, and now I'm doing A, B, C, and D, and I've always wanted to thank you. Now, that was just a really small little deed of love. I didn't know the person, didn't want anything from the person, but it created a, a movement of energy that changed her life, and she probably changed somebody else's life along the way. We don't have to make a big splash, but we want to be conscious to infuse what we do with our spiritual practice. Agree to disagree with limitation. Agree to disagree with lost opportunity. There used to be a superstitious thought that said opportunity only knocks once or something like that. It was some nonsensical thing that some uh, limited perceptual person created that became a superstitious thought. Opportunity is everywhere all the time. That's the way the nature of the universe is. It's infinite. Opportunities are everywhere. There's no lost opportunities. Once you come into alignment with the real nature of your being, you see opportunities everywhere. And then you'll walk in the direction of what? You're walking in the direction of your prayer work. Is what I'm about to do or say, is it in alignment with my prayers? Is it infused with light? As you walk in the direction of your prayer work, Giving yourself permission to move to higher and higher octaves of what? Your own being. Your own being. Whew. 
a whole new world opens up. It's already here, but you begin to see it now. Holy, holy agreement with life. Utterly, totally, absolute agreement that life is for you. Utterly, totally, absolutely agree to disagree with any thoughts in your own mind. Don't believe them all. Unless they're resonating with the truth of your being. My life is the life of God. Not the guy in the sky, but a presence. What did John say? Say, God is love. What Jesus said, God is spirit. We must worship God in spirit and truth. Right, Reverend Joanne? So we're not talking about this guy out there with the beard and hating people and hating on people and casting people into hell and eternity. I mean, come on. Come on. I'll just digress for just a second. For those of you who have children, and if you don't, you may have an uncle, you may have a niece, you may have a nephew, and if they did something wrong, would you hate them forever? Would you cast them out of your heart? For, no, you wouldn't. So you being human would not. The presence of God, which is love itself, cannot condemn anyone to eternal damnation. You see? So we roll up our spiritual sleeves. We do self-reflection. We disentangle the thought forms about ourselves, and that's very important because sometimes we beat ourselves up so badly. We tear ourselves down so badly. We, we have such a high critical nature of ourselves so badly about our mistakes we've made and things we should have done and not done and all. We have to disentangle ourselves from those thoughts, forgive ourselves and come into harmony with the higher octave. My life is the life of God. The presence and the power and the love of God is moving through and as me now. I go directly to the source of all creation, infinite supply and perfect peace. And let the God times roll like never before. I have a holy, holy agreement with life. Use me. Send me, I'm yours. We live in that frequency and in that dynamic. Let us move inward into prayer at this moment. Let us stop in this awareness and come to a holy, holy agreement with life. And that's a capital L, life. That's not just life experience. It is unadulterated, untouched by time, untouched by perception, untimed, untouched by human experience, life, life itself. As an analogy, just imagine space, infinite space. And then within infinite space, there are solar systems, there are galaxies, there are planets, and there are asteroids, there are comets. And those comets and those asteroids and those planets and those galaxies and those solar systems, they do not affect space. The presence and the power and the love of God is all around us, untouched by time and experience and our limited perception. So in this instant, we're rising up and giving ourselves permission to expand our awareness. Oh, my God. And how do we do this? We're expanding our awareness with gratitude. I'm thankful. I'm appreciative. Oh, I'm di it's difficult sometimes to find something to be grateful for because we're inundated with so much human experience and so much coming at us uh, from the world and the social milieu of everything that's happening on the planet. 
So this is why we have a spiritual practice to disentangle ourselves from that and say, oh my God, we're untouched at some level by it all. We are spaciousness itself. Gratitude, thanksgiving, pure appreciation. Just say, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I appreciate my life. And in this consciousness of gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation, oh, we get to see anew. Something within us says, behold, I make all things new. Something within us says, I am here. Something within us says, I have arrived. Something within says, everything is being made new right now. I feel it in my bones. And from this bright, shiny newness, our connection woo, is so real. Beyond the imaginary realm. Real, real, real. The real deal. The word is spoken. Not mere words. But the word infused with the dynamic connection with the presence. Oh my God. I get to speak it. And I just want you to know that every time I get to speak the word, it's a, I see it as a privilege. It's, it's, it's like, I, I get to do this. My life could have gone many, many, many ways. But some way, it was a choice, a holy, holy agreement with life. And I get to be right here and right now. I get to speak the word for each and every one of us that we may be free today, that we may proclaim that heaven is right here, that every organ, every action, every function of our being may come into divine harmony with the celestial being of light that's within us and that there becomes a rapid and an ever-increasing movement of health and vitality and vigor and strength and flexibility mentally, emotionally, physically. We love for our body temple to be a vehicle and a filament of divine light and the body of our affairs to reveal and reflect divine order and beauty. A relation shot through with the eternal, that eternal quality of peace and of love and of harmony. Joy, generosity, creativity. Oh my God, how great thou art. How wonderful and magnificent is thy holy, holy name. Thy divine nature in us, through us, and as us. We have a holy, holy agreement. Every day, we begin again, holy, holy agreement. We fall, we get up, holy, holy agreement. Every day, every day, utterly, absolutely, totally agreement. Life is for us. And something wonderful that's trying to happen is not blocked by our inner denial of it. We say, yes, and amen. Come on, bring it on. Yes, bring it on. There's going to be changes. Bring it on. There's going to be transformation. Bring it on. There's going to be letting go of stuff we don't need anymore. Bring it on. There's going to be release of negativity. Bring it on. There's going to be releasing of the egoic, holding on to stories. Bring it on. We're ready. The world needs us. And we give thanks that this is so. Woo! I want you to take a breath here. Release. Now allow your feeling nature to capture anything you may have heard today, whether it was in the songs, the affirmation, the message. 
that you're feeling nature, that receptive nature of you coming through the feeling, creating a level of coherence around what has been said. Help them feel it. into that 